So I thought to myself, <clears throat> how is this going to be MMA related to any degree, especially if I have an MMA channel and that's literally 90% or maybe 80% of it is what I talk about. But I saw this game playing in the rain pregame just right before UFC 300. Right? A very historic day for fighting because obviously it consists of the UFC centennial event. Coming from UFC 100, UFC 200, and today being UFC 300. And here we are. A live game going on in the rain. With an actual club, by the way. And I'm not quite sure which club that is. But we are soon to definitely find out. So we are getting close into the field as we speak. And this right here is the goalie. That was not a goal. Quite a save on that part right there. Only in the rain. How you doing? Do you know which clubs are uh, playing? Wh which one uh, are these teams playing? West Sack. West Sack? Yeah. This is the West Sack Club. Yeah. This is which uh, which color are they? Dark color. The dark color. Okay. And then so the white is the white away team. team. Away. Oh, where is the away team from? AFFC club. A F F FFC. AFFC. A A F F C. Oh, okay. Okay, very... In the park area. Oh, the park. okay. The, wow, this is very rare. Yeah, I, yeah. I have an MMA channel. I do an MMA channel, oh, that's okay. why. Yeah, thank you. So, <clears throat> UFC uh, 300, and here we are watching a pregame just right before that event, which will start 3 p.m. this afternoon, 3 p.m. West Coast, California, USA time. And here we have West Sac FC taking on ARFC. I'm not exactly sure where ARFC is from, but I there. That was a goal. West Sack just scored a goal, and this must be the official right here. I had asked someone passing by earlier, I was like, is this a high school game? And they're like, no, this is a club. So I had to come see it myself. And here we are <clears throat> on the same day as UFC 300. Just literally three hours before uh, UFC 300. Oh. For those of you that can see up close, yes, it, it can be a, an extremely uh, rough sport at times as well. Also considering 
the head trauma that you would have to take within the ball itself in the same similar fashion that you would receive a head kick in the same similar fashion that you would when you take a left hook or a straight right to the face. It's all literally in the same type of impact. Also, if you notice a lot of the knee to knee action, especially within the shins, you sort of see a lot of that in Muay Thai. And as a result, you sort of notice that, you know what? This is a real, real contact sport, but in a different way. Now, is it combative to a certain degree? If you really watch it up close, especially with the explosivity of the athletes and their movement, one of the things that you're going to notice is that, yes, you know, within a certain impact, like taking a leg kick in Muay Thai, in MMA or Lethway or all these other combat sports, it's all in the same similar fashion. Oh, by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. There is no mixed martial arts channel in the history of mankind that will ever present MMA in this similar fashion that I am right now. Because you're probably thinking, well, what does this have to do with MMA when you have a soccer footage in front of you? Well, I tell you what, it has a lot to do with it. Being that it's in the relevance of competition in something that all of us in mankind truly understand <clears throat> the battle of will the battle of facing the extremes even playing in a weather like this go on side go go By the way, for those that have just tapped in uh, watching, this is a game between ARFC and West SAC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, <clears throat> another thing to remember within the relevance of combat sports, facing competition in the most extreme conditions, those are one of the things that you definitely have to consider as an athlete, as a competitor, and as somebody that really needs to prove their worth. Look at that. Good shot. That was a goal right there by West Sack again. offsides from so a historic day indeed for some fighting UFC 300 while we are watching a local FC card for all the soccer fans that are watching us in Europe right now I'm sure you guys are liking this but for all of those of you that watch fighting in Europe 
and watch soccer. It's sort of like you're watching the FC game in the afternoon, right? And then at night, somewhere around 2 to 3 p.m., that's when the fights uh, happen. And uh, that's why if you are a fight fan in Europe, more than likely you're a hardcore fan but just imagine you're a hardcore fight fan and then you're a soccer fan as well like you're how you can make it on those two events right and then here we are we just randomly ran across oh shit i should be not here sorry another one really just a random uh, moment of occurrence to run across this as you're driving through on the same historic day as UFC 300. So like what I was saying earlier, right? If you notice the current condition that you are watching right now, right? It's raining. Most of you would be sitting in your couches right now saying to yourself, oh, it's raining out. I shouldn't be out there. Look at these dudes. These dudes are over here fighting for a spot. These dudes are over here fighting to be, you know, the next Ronaldo, Messi, you know, Conor McGregor, Khabib, all of that. You know, this is the definition of uh, no excuses, where most of you would fold in the small, smallest, you know, strenuous uh, challenges that's presenting to you. Also, you got to understand, dress people with a particular channel, right? This is what this is what it means to struggle. This is what it means to face adversity in the most smallest examples. So think about that. So anybody else have a uh, any bold predictions for uh, tonight's fights? I'm, I'm telling you right now, I would absolutely give the fight to Charles Oliveira. I just feel that his experience is going to overwhelm this uh, Armin Sarukian kid. In my humble opinion, right? Or we could be wrong and Armin Sarukian is the F-55 division. But hey, I got to tell you, you the fact that there is nobody in the MMA space that is going to create MMA content like this out of just sheer luck of running across this. And then on top of that, just uh, sheer balls to even do a content like this that has nothing to seemingly do with MMA, but somehow I make it. up close and personal right there. It's exclusive right there. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the commentary on this particular channel while speaking to you about MMA on the historic day of UFC 300. So forever and what it's worth, 
on the day of UFC 300, forever it will be known that I went here on this particular lucky day and happened to have caught footage of this particular game just so I can preview UFC 300. That's the best way that I can uh, take this piece. And here's the thing. Here's something that I think a lot of you need to really learn from this particular lesson, right? I said to myself, you know what? Am I going to get out of the car and start filming this, talking about it on the same day as UFC 300? Or am I just going to go drive away like a little wussy and not try to even attempt just like that shot that you just saw right there? Okay, now who has cadence that can come up with something like that on the fly? That's something that you will always have to remember. I came out here literally recording a recorded FC game between a local SAC team and from what it seems to be a team from what is known as ARFC on the same day as 300 UFC. Right? What is the lesson in that? Take risk. Never say no. And those are the most beautiful lessons in life that you absolutely have to remember. And you want to know what? Here's another thing. Not a lot of you would get up here. Sure. I'm sure it, there is a certain sheer luck that you can sort of uh, come by and say, you know what? I uh, literally came here off of luck, right? Well, what are you going to do with your luck? You see, a lot of you also love to complain about, well, you know, I never get a shot. I never miss. But then a lot of you don't also realize that when you do get that shot, how many of you actually go out and take it? Take it like you own it. Because not a lot of people are going to stand here and make this kind of commentary uh, on the fly with confidence okay that takes a certain difference of a person so i'm going to tell you guys right now before this uh card starts and i'm going to end it on the 20 minute uh mark of this particular stream i'm going to tell you i believe that ufc 300 tonight will be a very historic card based on the results. The results of the surprise and the elements of the surprise that I think is really going to unfold in this particular story. So don't forget to like and subscribe as we're about to close off in uh, two minutes or so. UFC 300 fight day. Jamal Hill versus Alex Pajera, the two division champion. Do you know what it takes for somebody to aspire to become a two weight world champion in the UFC? It is somebody that has a certain competitive drive that wants to prove something. And that is one thing that you are going to notice and see in this car that's going to unfold, that's going to create, let's say, upsets. that are going to create big breaks. There we go. It was saved. All right final predictions for UFC 300 Jamal Hill in the main event it's going to be uh Z Wang Zay Lee I just think that she's too strong for that girl and I don't think that she's going to be able to withstand the shots and you know what's strange is that um she trains with Uriah Favor which by the way is a great trainer right but here's something that i i think that is going to be uh a factor in uh in that outcome i think that jan is 
with a team that really doesn't emphasize a lot on finishes all the time. Not to say that they don't get any finishes, but their style doesn't often lend itself to a finishing style. And by the way, I'm going to make a video about Ronda Rousey's uh, current podcast that she did with a Diary of a CEO. That's going to be the next content for my video. Why I'm going to do that was because she said that she created a style that was conducive to finishing early. Now, why would she do that? She said because she was suffering from head trauma in the same similar fashion that you would probably see some of these players when they, let's say they take, uh, you know, head shots with the ball. Because after all, you notice there's a lot of uh, head usages that are in soccer as well. And it does give a certain level of concussion. Does it affect how you are in combat sports in terms of being vulnerable? Yes, absolutely. The vulnerability, there it is right there. The vulnerability is right there and it's present. And as a result, she wanted to create that style, right? So there is a style that is a certain level of urgency in which you go for broke. But that's not the style that Yan does. Wei Li Zhang is highly athletic, strong, and fast at the same time. And I think that her style is going to lend itself to finishing. So Yan is going to be the winner on that. And Bo Nickel, I don't think there's going to be any upsets there. That's going to be the way that it is. Uh, I'm going to go with Sadiq Youssef over Diego Lopez. Take a look at the past content to take a look at all my full predictions and all my content related to UFC 300. I will see you guys at the fights. We will enjoy the fights. And until next time, with the next upcoming content that I'm going to continue on a consistent basis, like and subscribe. See you soon. Inshallah.